All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. Another edition of Knicks Fan TV Live. CP the Franchise in here checking in. This is another episode of our NBA Draft Q&A. The number one show for the fans by the fans where we give you draft coverage from the guys that cover these prospects uh, to, to the fullest extent. So make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Hit the thumbs up so you don't miss the next one. Tonight's guest... Uh, returning to the show, my guy, Rafael Barlow, a.k.a. the NBA Draft Junkies, and making his first appearance on Knicks Fan TV, although he's contributed to this channel in many ways, making his first video appearance. My guy, Alex Amarante, a.k.a. the Knicks Draft Guy. Alex, how you doing, bro? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. Welcome, welcome to the show for the first time. Rafael, welcome back. Um, Glad to be back. Fish, always. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, man. Offic officially three weeks away from the NBA draft. Um, Rafael, I'll, I'll start with you, man. Just just give me your general thoughts on on this crop of prospects this year as as compared to uh, to you know even last year, years past. I think it's lived up to the hype. I think last year's class was a little underrated, and we had so much time to analyze them that we started picking guys apart. Yeah. But I feel like this class is, you know, we've all been hearing about the top five guys pretty much since the beginning of the, this basketball season. But I think now it's starting to develop into more so like a, a six player draft. I think, I don't think the top five is as fluid as everybody thought it is with Scotty Barnes possibly been able to move up. And then I just like the, just the unpredictability that I'm expecting from mm. seven through 14. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this draft. It seems sort of similar to last year, you know, where, where that middle of the pack, once you got through, you know, uh, you know, halfway through the lottery, kind of things kind of went a little bit haywire, man. I think, what, well, once Williams went up and got selected by the Bulls at four, um, yeah. th things kind of kind of got crazy. But Alex, how about you, man? What, what's your thoughts on this gra on these draft prospects this year? Yeah, similar thoughts. I think I think structure wise to last year's draft, I think, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with. You know, the top being, you know, the top, I think we have four kind of solidified top four guys, um, five if you want to count Kaminga in there too. Um, and then after that, it's really a crapshoot from, you know, six all the way down to, you know, 20 maybe even. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, I have a tier in my thing that goes from 12 to 32, I think. So, like, I think it's a wide range of guys, but uh, a lot of quality uh, prospects as well. You know, last year's draft, I think, was a lot deeper than people thought. Uh, and so I think uh, similar to this story, but I think the top is a little bit better uh, in this year's draft. Everyone's looking for the next generational talent. You know, who, who's going to be that guy? Mm -hmm. um, you, you're hearing Grant Hill comparisons with Cade. I mean, what do, what do you guys think of Cade Cunningham? Is, is he going to be that guy? I like him a lot. I, I really think that he is a, I think he's a franchise guy. He Coming into this year, everyone thought he was going to be this this great passer. That was kind of like the reputation that he had. And to my surprise, and probably to the surprise of a lot of people, he had more turnovers than assists. Mm -hmm. But what really shocked me was the shooting. I mean, he shot the ball extremely well, shot over 40% from three. And I, I made a case that he's arguably the best shooter in the draft, if you consider degree of difficulty. He shot 40% from three, like I mentioned, and he had to create a lot of those shots. I want to say like maybe 65 to 70% of, of the threes that he took were off the dribble that he created on his own. He shot about 44% on catch and shoot opportunities and 47% when he was open and catch and shoot opportunities. So if you compare those numbers to anyone else in this draft class, including his degree of difficulty, you can make a case, or at least I have made a case that he could be the best shooter in this draft, which is something that I would not have expected at this time last year. Alex, how about you, man? What would you take on Kate? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the shooting was kind of the one like major question mark with Cade coming in. I mean, it wasn't a bad shooter or anything at the high school or AU level, but it wasn't his like forte or, or something that he went to as often. Uh, um, but at Oklahoma State, you kind of saw, you know, the ball was in his hands majority of the time, a lot of creation responsibility. Um, and for him to put up those percentages um, in, in that kind of context, uh, I think really solidified him as the number one uh, guy in this draft. Um, also surprising was the defense. Um, you know, you see a lot of stars um, projected number one guys might not, you know, 
you know, give a hell on defense uh, all the time, but he really, you know, seemed to take pride in his defense uh, was really a team leader on that end of the, at that end of the ball too. So I think, you know, showing that motor uh, really, uh, you know, persuaded some people that, you know, he, he really is a good, you know, defender as well. Um, and then the passing, um, you know, the, the numbers weren't as pretty as people probably thought coming in as Raphael mentioned. Uh, but when you look at the tape, he still has those flashes of, uh, you know, absurd, you know, pass out of the pick and roll in transition. Um, I, I think, you know, given his size, he can make any pass in the book, um, you know, with better NBA spacing around, uh, I think his assist numbers will be fine. And then I, I'm assuming he'll have lesser kind of on ball creation responsibilities to the next level. Yeah. Uh, I still think, he, you know, he'll be a primary guy, but uh, I think that'll help cut down on his turnovers. It's going to be interesting to see what he does for the Pistons. Um, but as it pertains to the Knicks, man, we, we need a floor general of our own. We need a lot. You know, we need a floor general. We need some shooting desperately at the wing or even at the point. You know, we'll, whatever the case may be, we, we definitely need talent at both of those positions on the on the perimeter. Knicks currently sitting with the 19th to 21st <clears throat> picks in the first round and then the 32nd pick in the second round as well as the 58th. Um, now, from a point guard perspective, you know, a lot of the names we've been seeing in, in the mock drafts uh, for with if the Knicks stay put at around 19. Uh, first person you're hearing is Sharif Cooper. We have we have a Sharif Cooper hive going on in the in the chat. We got a Trey Mann hive going on in the chat. Um, Raphael, I'll, I'll go with you, man. How, how do you stack these two guys up and, and who would you feel like is the best fit for the Knicks? It's funny because on my first mock, I think I had them selecting Cooper. On my last one, I had them selecting Man, and I saw both hives. I saw the negatives. I saw the people that like the picks. So I don't think you can go wrong. I think um, they're different players. Trey Man's strength right now is his ability to create his own shot. I mean, he shot the ball similar to Kate. Shot the ball well from three when he had to create a lot of his attempts. Don't know if he's really like a I mean, I guess what what is the, a pure point guard in today's NBA? He's not the floor general as Cooper, but he's bigger. He may be a better defender. He's just not as exciting. Cooper is is going to bring like this excitement and this buzz that that I imagine New York Knicks fans are gonna love. Questions about his shooting? I mean, shot like twenty three percent from three, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't efficient, but he averaged eight assists per game, which is a crazy number in college basketball. Yeah, I, I agree with you, man. Um, Alex, how do you how do you stack these guys up, man, and uh, and, and Cooper? Yeah, they're they're in the same tier for me, and both guys that I really like, and I think fit well with the Knicks. Um, you know, Sharif, I, I think he's probably the best, you know, live dribble passer, uh, you know, pick and roll manipulator in the class, um, and just the way he's able to draw fouls, uh, you know, similar to a Trey Trey Young, you know, smaller guy. Uh, not afraid to get in the paint uh, and, and take contact. Uh, I think something like almost 50% of his offense was, you know, at the rim uh, at Auburn. And for a guy who, you know, despite what the you know, initial NBA combine measurements say, uh, he was, I think, well under six foot or you know, yeah. maybe, you know, exactly six foot and definitely not the six four that uh, was initially reported. Um, that seemed to be a mistake, but uh, yeah, again, the passing, it, I think, will translate fine, even as lesser size. And then, yeah, the shooting is the one question mark. But um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, just the different kind of passing that he'll be able to do lobs, uh, you know, to Mitch on the roll, to Obi, um, things like that. I think he could fit, you know, right in with the with the Knicks offense. And then uh, Trey Mann, yeah, totally different kind of point guard, combo guard, um, you know, probably one of the best off the dribble shooters in this draft, uh, good size of six, four, six, five. Um, you know, his struggles is kind of getting to the rim and, and athleticism and, and kind of the quick first step. Uh, that's one thing that he'll need to really improve on to kind of become a better scorer at the next level and not just have to rely on those step backs and sidestep shots that, uh, you know, he was hitting at Florida. Um, and again, not as skilled as a passer, but he, he can make the simple reads out of pick and roll. So, uh, you know, another guy that, that I really like for the Knicks. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see both positives to both guys, right? I, I think from a Cooper standpoint, um, if we just need a, a, a floor general that can get these guys going. You know, the thing with Peyton, obviously Tibbs loved that Peyton was a guy that could dribble penetrate. 
you know, at will. Finishing was a disaster. His shooting was a disaster. But I think part of the reason why he kept staying loyal to Peyton was his ability to attack the rim. And obviously what Tibbs has said is that he liked the size and, you know, switchability on the defensive end where he didn't get burned. Now, fans may disagree on that, but that was from the coach. Um, from a Cooper standpoint, I think just having a guy that can break down the defense and make plays, as you said, Alex, get those lobs over to Mitch. You know, um, Mitch's injury really hurt R.J. Barrett. You know, just not having, um, you know, a capable guy to throw those lobs to. But I think Cooper can get us going in the pick and roll, whether it's RJ, whether it's Julius, you know, somebody to get Julius some some open shots, which just wasn't there consistent, consistently last year. Um, now, the, the shooting is, is, is definitely a concern. Obviously, we saw that uh, with, with Peyton last year. Um, I, I believe, where was his free throw shooting this year, though? I, I believe his free throw shooting was, was pretty decent, right? Yeah, I think it was it was over eighty percent. I want to say like eighty two or yeah. something. Yeah, Cooper. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, from a from a free throw shooting standpoint, I mean, where do you, how do you guys feel like you know what do you think his his chances are of improving his, his jumper at the next level, given the fact that you know he was proficient from the free throw line. I think they're high. I mean, I think he has good touch. I think he needs to speed up his shot. Hmm. He has a slower release. And if you have a slow release and you're undersized, I think it can turn an open shot into a contested shot. So those are the the two biggest things or, or the biggest thing that I feel like he needs to work on with his shot is just getting it up faster and maybe even jumping. I know Chris Paul doesn't necessarily jump on on his shot when he shoots threes. He, he seems like he barely gets off the ground on his mid range, but he's able to mix you up with his ball handling and to create space. So I think Cooper may need to study a lot of Chris Paul tape, but I'm not too concerned about the shooting right now. I mean, I think he'll be able to develop, but the flip side of that is I think the Knicks are trying to win right now. So I don't know how much time he's going to have to, to really develop. So he's going to have to put in some work in the off season, whether it's for the Knicks or for, for any other team. Definitely going to have to have to show and prove. I mean, I, I think something that will benefit him is that quickly got some burn. You know, quickly did get some burn last year. I think they did give him an opportunity to, to play some point in, in certain sp spots, you know, where, where Tibbs felt like he could succeed. So obviously his, his elite shooting ability was something that we desperately needed on the court. So I think that's what kept him on, you know, kept him with consistent minutes uh, during the season. But, you know, quickly definitely did get, get some opportunities there uh, at the league guard. Um, you know, Cooper's, Cooper's definitely interesting. I think from a man standpoint, I like the fact that this kid can just go get buckets, right? He, he may not be, you know, your pure point guard. I'm not sure how many of those guys are left in the, in the league anymore. You know, I think a lot of these guys have a bit of combo aspects to them, you know, where you just got to go out there and get a bucket. And, and that's what I like about man. And I think he could fit just as much, you know, especially from the off ball prowess. Uh, you know, you could, you have instances where Julius has helped, you know, initiate offense for the Knicks. RJ has helped initiate some offense for the Knicks. We'll see where they go uh, at the three. You know, maybe they get somebody at the three that can be a capable playmaker as well. So he, he may not kill you. You know, some of the knocks I've seen with, with man is that, um, you know, doesn't finish strong, doesn't play physical. Um, what do you guys think about some of those some of those knocks that, uh, that the crit critics are uh, dishing out on man? Yeah, he's, he's pretty skinny. Um, so he'll definitely have to put on some muscle. Um, I think his finishing numbers were like right around average when you're looking at synergy. Um, I think he struggled a little bit getting to the rim, um, which, you know, it's not going to get any easier at the next level. Well, he does have a really good handle. Um, but a lot of those moves are kind of going side to side or backwards. Um, doesn't have that many, uh, you know, I mentioned the quick first step before he doesn't really have the, the best bursts. Um, so it, when he beats guys off the dribble, it's more so for a pull up jumper and not getting all the way to the rim. So definitely something that uh, he'll need to kind of work on is, is getting to the rim and uh, even getting to the free throw line more, I think will be huge. That's something that uh, Sharif Cooper really does well. Yeah. What's interesting is at least the guys that I feel like are point guards, these are the two worst finishing guards right. at the rim. Right. Man <laughs> shot like 59.7% at the rim. Only one that shot lower was Cooper, which is concerning because man is, I mean, they had him listed at six five. I don't remember what the measurements were at the combine, but it's it's concerning when you have a guy that's six five 
and he shoots below 60 percent at the rim and i think that is directly related to his lack of explosiveness the lack of first step and then as far as cooper i mean we know that his struggles at the rim are more so related to his size but i think cooper would be a better finisher with space Mm. whether or not the knicks have the the floor spacing that's going to get him those clean looks is is to be determined but it's interesting like i said these two guys are the guys that i saw on my list as point guards were the at the bottom as far as finishing as far as like first round prospects and and that definitely you know just in terms of the mix with this current lineup yeah that's one of the that's one of the downsides because you have both julius and rj who don't finish well at the rim whatsoever and so that's certainly certainly an issue and and we'll see uh you know how these guys can do at the next level but i think you know from a cooper standpoint at 19 Listen, everyone's going to be flawed at that point, right? You know, if if he was a great, you know, all around player, he'd be he'd be selected much higher, especially with his playmaking yeah. prowess. So, uh, you're going to have to gamble on on one of these weaknesses, you know, turning around to be somewhat adequate or or even or even good, you know, whether it's it's Cooper or um or or Trey Mann. So, We'll see where they go on July 29th. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP here with Rafael Barlow, the NBA Draft Junkies, and Alex Amarante, Knicks Draft Guy. Call in with your questions, 657-383-1509. Or you can also hit us up on the Discord, on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. First call up, we're going to go down to San Antonio, go down to the Alamo. My guy Chris is checking in, and he wants to weigh in on the Cooper and Man debate. Chris, how you feeling, bro? How you doing, panel? How you doing, CP? Good, bro. How you doing, man? Long time. Yeah, it's been a minute. I, I just wanted to ask a question for Rafa, and then question after that. But Rafael had uh, he had Obi in his mock draft last year, and we felt the way about that, but it actually happened. So I'm wondering between the guards that we have in our range are possible to select. I guess between Man Cooper or anybody else, because I know Pee Wee likes Darte too. Uh, who they think is the best fit, or who you guys think is the best fit with, uh, with Obi specifically? And then I also wanted to know. I feel like in terms of playoffs, you know, we want to get back to the playoffs. There was a conversation yesterday, like, do we take the wins that we had this year and just try to improve, or do we try to improve on the wins that we actually had and get back into the playoffs and make a deeper run? I feel like you can't do that without an All Star guard, right? So whether or not any any of these players are going to be an all-star guard. I'm wondering, in terms of draft prospects, what you look at specifically for a player, uh, looking at something that jumps off the board, like when you look at a player who you feel like has a higher ceiling that other guys aren't looking at, what are those specific things that you're looking for? And then between the players that we have at our range, uh, what kind of aspects from those attributes that you pick up on do do you see from those players that we could pot- potentially pick up? Uh, so, yeah, I did have them taking Obi last year, and I was high on Julius Yeah, Randall. you did. You did predict the Julius turnaround. You did predict the Julius turnaround, man. I, I got to give the you work, credit for both of And I even bro. said, I w- I'm a Blazers fan. I wanted Julius in Portland. True story. And I remember guys saying, they'll help me pack his bags. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like I took a lot of heat for that, and, and the turnaround was, was, was great for New York. As far as players I think the player that could probably help New York the most I know point guard is is a position of need but I feel like Duarte could really come in and I'm Chris Duarte from Oregon Mm -hmm. he's a little older he may not have the super high upside but I think he's ready to come in and contribute he give size at the wing I know the Knicks were one of the if I'm not mistaken a, a pretty good team as far as shooting from deep but it did not translate in the playoffs. Yeah, so I they, think they Duarte... were efficient. They, they they finished fifth in efficiency. Um, not much volume, but they, they, they did finish strong. They did finish the season strong, for sure. Yeah, but, and I felt like in the playoffs, you, you didn't... They needed... I felt like they needed more shooters. Needed I felt so like they more, had bro. trouble manufacturing points. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Duarte would be a really good fit. Yeah. 
I, I agree with you, man. And, and the thing about Duarte is that he can put the ball on the floor. I think that's another thing that hurt our wings was that, you know, RJ, to me, sometimes he got clamped up by Hunter. You know, you had you had um, uh, Reggie Bullock getting clamped up by Trey Young, <laughs> for, for <laughs> mostly because he can't put the ball on the floor. And RJ's still a work in progress when it comes to that. And I, and I thought Hunter did a, a spectacular job uh, just defending all of our, uh, our big three. So we just didn't have that versatility out of our wings. I thought... Um, you know, Burks gave gave you a, a good effort, just a little bit too erratic. And so, you know, to, to Chris's first question, yeah, I definitely think we, we need to upgrade um, at the wing. And then as far as who would be the best um, prospect for Obi and, and Alex, I, I'll want your opinion on this too. I, I think it's Cooper. Because yeah. because Obi's a guy that he, he needs that point guard um, to help him, whether it's out in transition. We didn't have any pick and roll with Obi, noticeable or memorable, actually with D-Rose. When D-Rose first came and they were in Miami, you had some nice uh, one-two game pick and roll there. But consistently, we didn't have a point guard that could consistently get OB going in the pick and roll. And I think Cooper would be tailor-made for that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Um, I think, yeah, getting OB into more pick and rolls as the role man, I think uh, is key for for his development this next season. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of how they utilized him. Yeah. Uh, a lot as kind of just a corner spot up shooter. Um, a lot of the time, just given uh, the spacing and if he was playing with Julius, you know, Julius was uh, mostly in the paint, things like that. So I think, uh, yeah, having having Sharif in there running a lot of pick and rolls, uh, you know, I mentioned the lobs before, I think he'd be electric in, in Madison Square Garden. Uh, I think the fans would love that connection. Um, so yeah, I think, I think he would be kind of the best pairing uh, for a guy at 19 or 21 uh, to go alongside Obi. And what about Duarte? You had Duarte up on, on your list of guards for the Knicks as well. What yeah. do you like about him? Yeah, no, yeah, I have. He's definitely a first round guy. Uh, you know, I think he's going to be 24 at the draft, like Raphael mentioned. Yeah. So, and, and, but that's the only, the only real knock on him. I mean, um, you know, Raphael mentioned Cade as being maybe the best shooter in the draft. Um, Duarte's right up there with him. Um, you know, I think he shot 44% from three uh, this past like season. 50 uh, 40, right? Yeah, I think he's a 50 40. Mm-hmm. high 80 guy yeah and and yeah and it, it was a heavy diet like a decent diet of a mix of you know catch and shoot and off the dribble um so it wasn't just you know stand still shooting right um that that was more so you know trey murphy is another prospect linked to the knicks um a lot more of his stuff is more just catch and shoot uh, which he did incredibly well yeah. but um duarte's got more of the kind of off the dribble uh shooting I'm going to want to get to uh, Murphy and, and the wings in a second. Um, Raphael, what about uh, Jaden Springer? Yeah, Jaden Springer uh, on the list of guards that you had liked. Um, what's your thoughts on him? Not a sexy pick. <laughs> uh, his game is, I mean, it's effective. Mm. The concern I had for him was I felt like he was too passive. And when I first saw him play, and I, I'm probably going to get flamed for this. When I first saw him play, the same exact notes that I had about Frank Milikina in 2018 Uh-oh. are the notes that I had about Uh-oh. Springer. <laughs> kind of like it's a divisive <laughs> name on Nick's uh, yeah. nation. A little bit of a combo guard, maybe not as assertive as you would like, passes up open shots, defensive upside, can defend multiple positions. Those are like the basis of what I've had for Springer and, and Milikina. So I know that wouldn't be popular. Yeah. Yeah. Year. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if the Frank hive is heavy in here. Frank's just played today. I didn't see the result. I didn't catch the Frank highlights, man. But, but you know, Fever Frank is a different guy, man. Fever Frank is, is a much more <laughs> aggressive type of player. man. I was actually <laughs> in China for the world cup and uh, yeah, that's not the same guy. that. Yeah. On the next year. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same guy, man. Um, Alex, you have any thoughts on, on Springer? Yeah, I mean, pretty much the same. I mean, he's you know not a sexy pick, but he does everything pretty well. Uh, doesn't have any major flaws. Um, you know, some people will say you know he lacks athleticism, but he's actually a pretty explosive leaper. Um, I think the issue translate on the floor. exactly the issue is that everything's off the two feet. Um, so you'll see him like driving towards the lane and going up for a layup is off two feet. Um, you know, everything that he tries to do is off two feet comes to a jump stop a lot instead of kind of uh, exploding towards the rim. Um, so stuff like that, but I think that could be all be ironed out eventually. Um, solid defender, 
Um, he's got an NBA ready body at, you know, 18, 19 years old. So you don't really see many of those guys come through. So, um, you know, I think, I think he's a guy worth looking at in 1921. Um, I think he's definitely has some upside that, that probably, um, you know, I think, uh, Johnny O'Brien can probably, uh, get some, get some more oomph out of him. You know what? And, and the, the thing that could help as far as if Springer is available to the Knicks, Donovan Mitchell had the same issue coming out of Louisville. He jumped off of two yeah. feet and uh, uh, what's his name? Bryant was there in Utah, whether he's the one that got him to work on jumping off of one foot and being more creative around the rim. That could be something to consider there. Cause I know Mitchell gives Bryant a lot of credit for his development. Yeah, that's a good point. Interesting. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. It's another episode of the NBA Draft Q&A. CP here. I got my guys, Rafael Barlow, the NBA Draft Junkie, Alex Amarante, Knicks Draft Guy in here answering your questions. 657-383-1509 is the number. Shout out my guy, JD Sports Talk. Sends a super chat. He says, in five years, who is the best player in the draft and who will be a bust? Hmm. Fellas, what are you thinking? Best player in this draft. In five years, what do you think? I think it's Cade. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Cade. Be boring. Go with the boring pick. <laughs> and, and what about a bus? Who, who do you think uh, is gonna fall flat? Whew. So the guy that I feel like has the biggest bust or all star potential is Kai Jones. I feel like hmm. if he's an all star in five years, I wouldn't be shocked. If he's playing for Panathinaikos in Greece. That wouldn't shock me either. So I think he has a wide range, maybe even Zaire Williams also. Mm -hmm. But Kai Jones is a, a guy that, you know, he's definitely a swing for the fences pick, high upside guy. But I also see like he has a lot of flaws and his game is raw and he could be out of the league soon. So interesting. That that's my pick. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good pick. I, I was gonna say Zaire. Um, or Keon Johnson. Mm. Um, I, I think, you know, kind of different prospects. You know, Zaire is kind of, you know, 6'8", two guard slash wing, um, you know, can make his own shot off the dribble, but does anything else translate? We'll see. He's got body concerns. Well, yeah, it's still up to interpretation. That he did yeah. it. But I feel like he's been – living off of his high school hype. I mean, he was highly regarded coming into this year as a top 10 pick. His film is bad. Just being yeah. honest with you, if you watch his film is bad. I mean, there could have been some factors involved. <clears throat> Stanford was a team without a home. Definitely yeah. had a weird season. Like Stanford yeah. overall and him with the you know knee brace going on yeah. and then COVID <laughs> yeah. protocols. So, um, but yeah, him and then, and then Keon, I think obviously an incredible athlete. Um, mm. is he an incredible basketball player? I don't think anyone knows. Um, so mm. I think if everything clicks for him, he's a multi-time all-star. Uh, if, if he doesn't, then he could it's be Dante out of the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Minus the injuries, hopefully. Dante yeah. Exum. Uh, let's see what people in the chat are saying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of Greg Browns. Shout out Justin Archer. Uh, Zogod saying Greg Brown could be the guy. I'm seeing some Franz Wagner's in here. Greg Castillo says Franz Wagner's going out like Dario Saric in this thing. I don't know, man. What do, what do you guys think? Franz Wagner could be the bust. Uh, we're seeing uh, some maker, maker, maker in there. JT Thor. All right. So Abu Baji's my, my guy. I saw someone, Sherwin, just mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. Abu Baji. Okay. All right, shout out Sherwin. If you guys are new in the chat, leave us a hashtag new. We'll shout you guys out. Um, before we get to the phones, I see uh, my guy Jay from East New York is on the phone. Jay, just remember, no speakerphone. But before we get to Jay, um, Raphael, some Knicks news has, has broken today, broken by you. So you're on a roll, man. You predicted the OB pick. You predicted the Julius turnaround. And now one, what's this guy's name, Vrenz? Vrenz Blindberg. Vrenz Blindberg has been interviewed by the Knicks in this upcoming draft, man. Tell us a little bit about Vrenz Blindberg. Vrenz is someone that I feel like I was early to the party on. Mm. I think I did a video on him. I want to say it was probably back in maybe November, maybe even earlier than that. 6'10", can handle the ball, play makes, decent shooter. He's agile. He's, uh, I think he has first round talent, but he's been playing in Belgium. I feel like if he played in France or Italy or Spain or a country that has a reputation for producing NBA talent, 
then I think he would be more highly regarded. He had offers to some of the power five schools and even offers to go play for some of the bigger clubs in, in Europe, but he decided to stay home in Belgium. So I think that's played a role in him being underrated. But if you watch his film, I mean, you it, it's hard not to, to like what you see. Again, he's 6'10", he can handle the ball, he can run pick and rolls. He had a, a good connection six with... 6'10", um, so I mean, uh, we're talking about a, a three or, or a four here. Maybe a stretch four? Maybe a two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if people like Pokashevsky, and actually the video I made, I, I said, is he the next Pokashevsky? Mm. He's he's older than Pokashevsky by maybe a year or two, but similar as far as just like this positionless guy that is in the right system can be a weapon that you can run four or five pick and rolls for. Mm. You can run two, four, whatever. So I'm, I'm really high on, on Vrenz. And I, I think that, well, based off my knowledge, I knew that he went to this combine in Minnesota and I've been, you know, staying in contact with him. And he told me that he, he did well. And so once he told me, he's like, I did so well that the Knicks are bringing me in for a workout on Saturday. So I was like, can I, can I break this? And so, yeah, I was able to break the news and don't, so that was uh, I gained a lot of followers on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> the Blindberg Hive is coming through. <laughs> All right, it could, could be an option. I don't know if it's an option at fifty eight or thirty two, or maybe they move up somewhere in between, and, and, and you know potentially look at this kid. But interesting. I, I honestly think he's a first round talent. Mm. I, I do. I feel like if he would have went to school at Arizona and some of the schools that wanted him, I think that he'd be more well known. And again, like if you watch the film, there's a lot of tools that he has that teams are, are really high on. So yeah. it's not shocking to me that he went to this combine in Minnesota and all of a sudden teams are starting to bring him starting in. Starting to rise up. Definitely look like he can shoot, man. Alex, have, have you seen this kid? Yeah, I've watched a few games. Of his. Uh, I, I have him in, I think, the low 40s, uh, but I, I would take him at 32. Um, I think he's, he's worth the shot there. Mm. Uh yeah, six ten guard skills um, can fly in transition. I think the speed really pops off the film when you watch him. Um, the only real concerns I have is on the defensive end. Um, he'll definitely need to fill out a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, I think he has over the past year or two. I saw pictures of him when he was like nineteen. He was rail thin, and now it looks like he put on some muscle. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to be you know a really versatile offensive weapon. Uh, I think the the defense is just something that he'll definitely have to work on and. Uh, I'm sure it will improve, improve on. Yeah, one of the things that he mentioned to me was he said when he played at like the under 16s, he was known as a shooter. He was a really good shooter. Mm. But he said once he started trying to lift weights and bulk up, it messed up his shot. Mm. So he felt like this year mm. was the first year that he started to feel comfortable with his shot. So um, the numbers were okay. I know at the beginning of the season, maybe like the first 10 or 15 games, he was at around 38% from three. It kind of tailed off as the season went on. But just from talking to him, I do know that he said that was his main weapon prior to putting on weight was his shooting. So based off of that, and according to him, of course, that once he fills out, it's going to translate and that's going to be his main weapon again. Interesting. Okay. So that's Friends Blindberg. Um, for people in the chat, we'll, we'll see, man. A name to, to potentially keep an eye out on. So see how that plays out. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Let's get those likes up. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Another edition of the NBA Draft Q&A. CP, Raphael, and Alex in here. All right, let's go back to the Discord. Let's go to Jay from East New York. Jay from East New York, what's going on, bro? Hello? Yo, what's good, bro? All right, so um, I did a little bit of research, and um, as far as point guards go, I'm, I'm still I'm still high on Bones Highland, but I also forgot about Jason Preston. Like, can you guys like give a little bit more insight on him, and also somebody that stood out in the draft combine, Quentin Grimes? I can't really say he's a he's a two or a one, it's like he could play one through three. But like, how do you guys feel about him? Like those two guys. So we got Bones Highland, we got uh, Jason Preston, and, and Quentin Grimes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Pre those, those my guys. I'm looking at them three right now. Appreciate the call, man. Appreciate the call, All right. bro. All right, fellas, what, what, are, you, what are we thinking? Bone, let's go Bones Highland first. You can, you can take it first. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Bones, uh, he played at VCU, um, so smaller school. Um, he's – the definition of a shot maker um, at, the, at the guard position. Um, 
he did he did play in the pick and roll a bunch. Uh, he was their their main uh, guard there. Um, you know, he I think he can make you know similar reads to like a Trey Man, um, simple pick and roll reads. Nothing nothing too advanced. Um, I don't know if he's going to play. You know, we we brought up this topic multiple times already. Like a true point guard position, what does it even mean? But yeah. um, I think he, you know he can run a few pick and rolls. Um, uh, you know, during a game, uh, I don't I don't know if it's someone that you're going to throw the ball to and run all of your start all of your offensive sets with. But I think he could be a, a play finisher for sure. Um, he's got range out to 35 feet. I mean, he's got, he, he could do pull up step backs. Uh, he's got everything in the bag in terms of, you know, the shot creation. Uh, that's why I'm pretty high on him in the twenties. Um, and I would take him at 21 if, if he's on the board there. Um, and then, you know, Rafael, I don't know if you have any more thoughts on yeah, bones. I, I like bones a lot. He kind of reminds me of Lou Williams in a sense where early in Lou's career, they were trying to make him a point but he wasn't a point. And then once he got into a, a role of your job is to come off the bench and get buckets, he was able to settle in and kind of make a name for himself there. I think Bones is similar. He's a scorer. He's he's a guy that when you put him in pick and roll, it, it's to for him to get buckets as opposed to create for Great. others. But I like him. I think that he's someone that can come in and provide instant offense. I don't know if you're expecting him to be your point guard, if you're going to get the best out of him. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, then um, Press, I think Preston was the next guy you, he had mentioned. <clears throat> yeah, so do you want to start, Rafael? Yeah, I Preston? could do Preston. Preston is, uh, I think, like the first or second video I did this season was on Jason Preston, and it was after the big game against Illinois. By far the best story in, <laughs> I mean, in the draft, I'm sure the the networks are going to eat that up for those that don't know he was like a backup in high school and I think he went to school to be like a journalism major then went to I don't know was it like a, a prep school or a sec, something like something like crazy the, so he, he like got invited to play on some one of his friends AAU teams or something mm. and then some scout saw him and said hey you should go to prep school and play yeah, basketball <laughs> and then he's he's like you know a, a projected draft pick a funny thing is, and, and this may be funny to some, but if his name was Jason Ball, he'd be a a lottery pick. He looks like the fourth ball brother. Yeah, he and does. actually plays he, he like does. him too. <laughs> yep. He has the size, he has the the creativity off the dribble. I mean, as far as passing creativity, he's a good rebounder. He shoots the ball well. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if his name was Jason Ball, would we be higher on him than Jason Preston? Because nobody really knew much about him. I mean, he is the epitome of a, a late bloomer and underdog. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, he's he, great passer, one of the best passers in the draft. Um, the only real question with him on that end is the athleticism. Um, he didn't really show much athleticism at uh, Ohio. Um, but I thought of, he showed some at the combine. Like, yeah, that's what Pete, that's yeah. what I, I've seen people, you know, shooting the numbers and then in the games, uh, he looked a little more athletic. Um, but like at Ohio, it looked like he needed kind of a ball screen to, to create anything. He struggled to kind of create for himself. Um, but yeah, a guy, you know, I think, um, as a mid second rounder, I think, you know, you, you know, at that point you want to take someone who has a bankable skill. And I think the passing is a bankable skill at the, at the next level. What do you think of his shooting? I know the numbers look good. It's like 40% yeah. from three over the last couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. But the free throw percentage is concerning. Yeah, I think, I think again, he's a guy that needs space to get the shot off and, and feel comfortable. Um, you know, I think – I didn't think – I don't think he shot it very well at the combine, if, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if the numbers are, mm -hmm. or anything, but um, – yeah, I think I think he'll be okay. Um, I don't think he's going to be any sort of advanced kind of shot creator. Right. Um, but if he's playing off ball, I, I think he could make catch and shoot threes. Um, I, I wouldn't expect too too much kind of off the dribble uh, shooting from him. But you know, hopefully, hopefully, he can get better in that aspect. Yeah. Shout out down one twenty says he's he's a Dollar Tree Lamelo. <laughs> he looks like <laughs> <a touch. laughs> he's a tall, lanky point guard. Yeah. In the past, so. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, we have Quentin Grimes, who I guess was the star of the combine in terms of the scrimmages. Definitely showed out. Seems like he could have raised his draft stock. What, what do you guys think about Quentin Grimes out of uh, H-Town, University of Houston? 
Yeah, I think he's kind of on the uh, the Bones Highland kind of spectrum in terms of, of point guards, if you want to call point guards. Um, he, you know, is, is a bucket getter. Um, he shot the ball really well this year at Houston, um, a lot better than uh, his, his previous years in college uh, before he transferred. Um, so I think, you know, I think time will tell with the shooting. I think um, the larger sample, I think he'll kind of show. And, and I've heard people kind of have that as a, still a question mark, be like, is the shooting numbers real? Kind of like a Davion Mitchell mm-hmm. um, bump he had this year. Um, but yeah, again, um, I think he's, he's good. He's going to be a good scoring combo guard. Um, but not, I don't know if he's a guy that I would kind of, again, initiate my offense through, um, you know, time and time again. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I feel like he's living up to now he's living up to the hype that he had coming into college. Uh, he went to Kansas. I think he had like a really good game at the beginning of his freshman season. And then it just kind of went down. It was like the there. first game. I think it was like yeah. the first game. Like one of those tournaments, right? One of Yeah, those. I think against Duke. I think he like went off for like high 20s and points or something. And then after that was, yeah. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I mean, I agree 100% with everything they said. That is Quentin Grimes. What do you guys think in the chat? Bones Highland, uh, Jason Preston, and Quentin Grimes. Leave us a comment in the chat and we'll get back to you guys. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let me see if we got any hashtag news. If you guys are new in the chat, welcome to the show as well. Make sure we get those likes up. Another edition of the NBA Draft Q&A. Remember, guys, that this show, as usual, is presented by Manscaped, the number one men's grooming tool below the waist. Go out and get the new Lawnmower 4.0. You will not regret it. This is the Ferrari of ball trimmers, fellas. Do not go without it. It's summertime. It's hot out there. You got to make sure that you turn the AC on downstairs, and it starts with the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0. It's got the nice matte black finish. Look at that thing shining in the light. You have the uh, the LED light, which is now a spotlight. So, you know, you can do it in the dark, whatever you're into. Or, you know, it's raining out here in New York and the lights might go out. You can use it as a flashlight, man. So very versatile. It's a Lawnmower 4.0. It's got the ceramic blade skin safe technology to cut down on those nicks. Not the bad, not the good nicks, the bad nicks. You know, you you definitely don't want those. And, uh, yeah, remember to go to manscaped.com, enter promo code NYX for 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com, promo code NYX for 20% off plus free shipping. And also, they just released the Performance Package 4.0. So you get the Lawnmower 4.0. You get the ball deodorant, the ball toner. So it, it all comes in a package, man. You won't be left without. You won't be left sorry, fellas. So make sure you go to Manscaped and uh, go salute our guys. All right, let's get to the phones. Um, let's hear from Jason. Let's go to the LES. Jason in the building. Jason, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, good. I'm Jason Meredith on Twitter, so I just want to throw that out. I right. yep. want to ask a question for Raphael. Mm-hmm. What up, Jason? So last year you, you called us drafting Obi Toppin. And every all of us were like, no, we're not going to do that. And you said you had like they have a, a good connection between the Knicks and him. Do you do you know who the Knicks are drafting this year? <laughs> no, I mean that was CAA. Like you know, I, that was CAA. Yeah, you put the two and two together, right? <laughs> yeah. So Julius is CAA. Oh, I thought you had more inside info. <laughs> no, I mean just Knicks history. CAA. I mean, I used to work with uh, Chris Douglas Roberts when he was in the Knicks camp a few years ago, and I know one of the reasons he didn't make the team was because CA had J.R. Smith's brother <laughs> and they gave him like half a million dollars <laughs> to play like two games or something like that. So yeah, once Leon Rose officially took the title and OB signed with CA, I just kind of put two and two together. It wasn't like I had some real inside information. So I'd have to look and see who CA's uh, <laughs> draft class is this year. So, oddly enough, Davion Mitchell, CA. Yeah. And, uh, and um... I mean, I, I just did a mock draft right before this one, and he actually fell to number 20. And so mm. he, yeah, he would actually be a good a fit for New York. I would, I would love to have him. And and I'm guessing, Jason, well, this is this is what you, you're alluding to. You, you'd like to trade up for him if he's available? No, no, I don't, actually. Oh, I okay. like him, but I think, he's, <laughs> I think he's in the same tier as Trey Mann and Sharice Cooper. Like, I don't think he's better than those guys. Okay. So, so I wouldn't want the Knicks to trade up and get him. If he fell to us, I would be very happy. I mean, yeah. if we had to trade up a few spots, like we use 32 to get up to like 17, mm-hmm. I would be happy. But I don't want the Knicks to like trade both picks to move up to like 12 and get them. I don't think he's better than Sharif Cooper and Trey Mann. I think he's in the same tier. What do you th- guys think? 
Yeah, he's divisive, man. Like I've seen him as high as seven on some boards. I know yeah. I had him in the top ten. And um I mean it just depends on how you feel about the shot. Like shot I, I want to say like 42, 43, maybe forty four percent from three. But it was an outlier season. The free throw percentage is still in the sixties. The Donovan Mitchell comparisons are That's crazy. Kind of lazy. That's a terrible comparison. Yeah, that's crazy. It's they just, they it's look just alike. Jersey, they may move alike name. a little bit. That's it, yeah. man. <laughs> but the difference is obviously the size. Mitchell's bigger. The wingspan is like seven inches shorter for Davion. And Davion does not get to the foul line despite him having burst and athleticism. Yeah, he just, you know, you know he's going to shoot a pull up jumper. Like, it's not the shooting that worries me. It's the, is he going to be able to like finish at all? Like when he goes to the bat rim? Or draw well, he fouls. doesn't. Yeah, he, he didn't. He doesn't get there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so I actually think of him as more of, I think a better comp than Pat Bev is like, I'm sorry, than Donovan Mitchell is like Pat Beverly with some playmaking. You know, that, that could be okay. true. But, you know, the funny thing is I just saw a something about the, maybe like 2008, they had a USA team that played at this FIBA tournament. And Steph Curry was on the team. I forgot who else was on the team, but Pat Bev was the leading scorer. So um, maybe Pat just has accepted a role to be a, a pest. Maybe he has more offensive game than we really know about. Yeah, yeah I, I also, actually, I actually like Jared Butler over and, Davion Mitchell. Um, really? You talk about Baylor guards. Hey, he said he said he likes Jared Butler over Davion Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, I think to me, I like Davion Mitchell a little bit, but they're right there. Like to me, those guys and Miles McBride, they're all kind of right there. I like Cooper and Mann more than probably all those guys, but they're all like in the same same level to me. That's why I don't get why he jumped so high up, Davion Mitchell. March Madness. Um, March and, Madness. Yeah, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll get off is, um, I don't think there's anyone worth trading up for for the Knicks to do. Like anyone worth like packaging both picks to go up and get. Like, I don't – I'm not crazy about Bookland. I like him, but I'm not crazy about him like all these other fans. I think if the Knicks stay, they'll get two good players at 19 and 21. What do you think? I like Bookland. So I was just in Miami last week, and uh, the gym that I was creating some content at, he was there working out. I wish I would have been able to film him and, and get some um, some videos of it, but the agents weren't allowing that. So I had a chance to, like I said, watch and work out for three or four days. The one question I had about him was catch and shoot. I think he shot like 29% yeah. from three. The shot looked well. I mean, it looked really good in, in these workouts. But again, there was nobody there uh, as far as like playing defense. But he also, based off of what I read, shot the ball really, really well at the combine. So the shot looked good to me. I If there is a player, depending on where he's at, like if he starts to slip past – New Orleans, then I think it may be worth, you know, trying to trade up and get him. I would try yeah. to go get him. Yeah. I would try to go get him. I like Kispert too, bro. I like Kispert for the Knicks, man. I don't know. I'm seeing mock drafts where, you know, I saw, I think, Bleacher Report. They had him at 14 to Golden State. Um, mm-hmm. if, if he's within that range, you know, Golden State has 7 and 14. I would try to give him a call and, and, and try to get up there see if one of these guys slip. Yeah. I mean, somebody's going to slip, whether it's Mitchell, whether it's Keon Johnson, Kispert, Jalen Johnson. Those are the guys that I think are more likely to slip. But I don't know if any of those guys would be worth trading up. Book night, yes, I, w- I would try to trade up for book night. Alex, how about you, man? Yeah, overall, I think I would stay put at 19-21 for the most part. Um, you know, book night is a guy who I like as well. Um, I think he, he's got a lot of potential. Um, I think the shot, um, you know, took a dip this year, but he also got injured halfway through the year. Um, before the injury, he, he was shooting the ball a lot better than after. Um, so Creighton for 40. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm from Nebraska. So I'm from <laughs> Omaha. So I, you know, I keep up with Creighton and yeah, he, he, a 40 ball, a, a good, easy 40 also. And then a pretty efficient, yeah, pretty efficient yeah. 40 too. Um, yeah. So he's one name, um, you know, Moses Moody's another one, um, who, you know, might fall to that 14 range, um, who, if he's there and the price is, you know, not bad, I I might scoop him up. Um, he's a guy that I like, um, you know, out of Arkansas uh, wing. Um, so I, yeah, but for the most part, I think 1921, you know, as we mentioned before, there's a pretty, pretty wide gap or not gap, um, pretty wide range of prospects, um, that should be there, um, wings, 
guards. Um, I think those are the two kind of positions of of need for the Knicks right now. So I wouldn't mind staying put at 1921 and grabbing one of each. Yeah. Uh, and then along the lines of um, the wings, another guy who's – Draft positioning, I, I just can't um, get a handle of is Trey Murphy, man. He's a guy I like, though, man. I, I think, you know, in, in this wing-oriented league, having that versatility, you know, 6'9 guy, can guard threes, can guard fours. Obviously, he, he's a splash brother in his own, you know, more stationary than than putting the ball on the floor. But I still like his, his defensive intensity. Um, I think he could be a Tibbs guy and a guy that, you know, you can use in, in multiple positions to give you some versatility out there, man. I know, uh, Alex, you, you had Murphy up there and, and Raphael, you as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have him right around where the Knicks are picking. Um, yeah, knockdown shooter at 6'9". Tough. Uh, I think he has a seven-foot wingspan or close to it. Um, so, you know, why not? I mean, it's, it's what every NBA team is looking for. I yeah. mean, look at a guy like Cam Johnson right now for the Suns, uh, who's been killing in the playoffs for them. Um, I think he, he fits into pretty much any team, that kind of archetype as – you know, wing shooter who can, uh, you know, defend threes and fours. Yeah, I mean, the, I like the Cam Johnson comparison because we laughed on draft day when he was selected in the lottery. Mm -hmm. And Phoenix, I don't know if this was their their plan, if they were, if they knew that they were going to be at, at where they are today or this was, they were high on them. But either way, that was more so a pick for fit as opposed to best player available. And if Trey Murphy ends up, having a similar situation that wouldn't surprise me. The scary thing for him is if the further he falls, he's going to end up going to one of these playoff teams, one of these good playoff teams and really helping them, whether it's like a Philly or Brooklyn or Utah, somebody yeah. at the late in the first round. So he's going to end up more than likely in a position where he goes to a playoff team. And I think he's going to be able to come in and contribute right away. Similar to how Desmond bang did for, Memphis, this Memphis. Year. yeah, yeah. I, I like this kid, man. Hopefully, he's he's around. He could be an option at twenty one. Maybe he's thirty two, but it sounds like he could be gone before that. Sounds like he could be gone before that. So, to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. CP, Alex, Raphael, in here. Another edition of the NBA Draft Q and A. Couple, a uh, couple minutes before tip off. Shout out to Dave. Um, somebody in the chat had asked uh, who the Knicks had interviewed so far. I uh, just texted Ian Begley to see if he had an updated list in here back from just yet. But as of um, June 25th, the most recent uh, information I have is that they met with uh, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Johnson, Jaden Springer, Book Knight. They met with Kispert. Uh, Sounds like they're trying to move up. Well, yeah. So, yeah. so I've, you know, obviously some of these guys are, are out of their range, <laughs> but they also interviewed uh, Jared Butler. They interviewed Bones Highland, Zaire Williams, Miles McBride, uh, Joshua Primo from Alabama, Aaron Wiggins, Jose Alvarado, Georgia Tech, Mac McClung, Texas Tech, Alan Griffin out of Syracuse, uh, Marcus Zegarowski out of Creighton, Geo Baker from Rutgers, Trey Murphy, uh, G uh, Tyson Etienne, Wichita State, Luke Garza from Iowa, Moses Wright, Georgia Tech, and Fardaz a, 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 I Make from Utah Valley. So that's the list that I have so far. That was as of June 25th. Yeah, it sounds like they're going to move up or the agents are allowing guys that are projected to go so high to yeah. interview with the Knicks because it's the Knicks. I don't think if <laughs> the Kings were picking where the Knicks are, those yeah. guys would have even got an interview. Probably so, not, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I got to think they're going to be aggressive, though, Alex. I mean, last year should, should you know, be an indicator. I mean, yeah. I, no, I, I, I've I, never I think, seen you know, them able I'm to sure maneuver that, that way in, in, in previous years, man. They, they had these moves ready to go from day one, you know, being able to jump up to go get Obi – and then uh, jump up again to get IQ. They, they definitely had their ducks in a row. Yeah, no, I think if they have, you know, a certain guy in mind and he's there at, you know, 10, 10 11, 12 or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Leon and company will be on the phones uh, trying to move up to get their guy. Wouldn't surprise me at all. 
Absolutely, man. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. What would you guys in the chat want to do? Do you want to stay put? As Alex said, he, he, he likes to stay put at 19 and 21, 32 as well. Or do you want to move up? And if you want to move up, is there a person that you, you're looking to get? Leave me a comment in the chat and I'll shout you guys out. And in the meantime, I want to go to the closer of the night. My guy JD at JD Sports Talk is going to close the show. JD, how you feeling, bro? CP. You, what's good, buddy? How you doing, God, man? Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear, bro. All right. All right, good, 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 good. good. Uh, just first want to say outstanding show last night. want to thank you for continuing to bring us in the community, you know, quality content, bringing on guests to give us that, you know, nice, different perspective and, and educating the, the community and the fan base. So appreciate you for that. And, and salute to the guests today. Uh, I have a few questions. You know, today's a show where you just sit back and you're, you're a sponge. You just want to listen to you guys and see what you guys, you know, your takes are and, you know, what your thoughts are. You know, what do you guys think we should do with this point guard situation? You know, <laughs> should we just draft? Should we trade for Dame Lillard? Should we – is there a free agent you guys would, you know, have in mind that the Knicks should sign? Like, how do you think the Knicks – organization should address this position. I think it's an important thing because I you know, it's one of the most yeah argued the most, you know, important off season in recent critical. memory here. And I think the way that they allocate this money will have a very much effect on the future and, you know, in how this team continues to progress. And in addition to that, what do you guys think about Luca Vildoza? Um what are your thoughts on him? And the last one it's a little bit of a curveball. Mm -hmm. Bronny James, is 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 this guy going to be anything? LeBron's kids, you know. I'm a Knicks fan. I'm looking at 2023 already. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but it, you know, I, I, we see a lot of highlights. You know, it's just you know a little conversation kind of question. You know, what do you guys yeah. have you guys done any research on him? Any projections? Uh, you know, but, I, it's just interesting to me. So, what do you guys think we should do for the point guard position? Mm -hmm. What do you what are your, what are your thoughts on Luca? And any little points on Bronny James? Bronny CP, James. thank you. Appreciate Rafael, it, Rafael, Nick's draft guy. Love you. Well, guys. well first, yeah. I would say uh, focus on Dewan Wagner's son. That's that's the guy. Oh, is he? He's a beast. <laughs> Young yeah, Dewan that... Wagner's like his pops. He's getting buckets like that. I think he's the number one player in his class. Yeah, he's he's up there. Yeah. Wow. He's, he, I mean, he's been sliding under the radar. I mean, like his name is on like the list, but you don't really see like the huge hype behind him on YouTube or Instagram. Like you see Mikey Williams, you see these other guys, but Dwan Wagner's son is the truth. Interesting, interesting. Um, now, now let, let's go to you on on Vildosa, right? Because I, I think of the three of us, you, you've probably seen more film of. I'm, I mean, Alex, I can't speak for you. I know for me, I, I didn't. Um, what do you think about his potential at the next level? We've seen Campazzo do his thing for for uh, the Nuggets. He was a steady hand in Murray's absence. Um, what, what do you think about Vildosa and, and his prospects? I mean, he's from Argentina, and I think there's just been a, a follow-the-leader type deal with Argentinian prospects. And to me, I mean, when you think of Argentinian prospects, you think of the guys from that golden era when they had Ginobili and mm -hmm. Scola and, mm -hmm. and those guys. But they went to, I don't remember if they went to championship game at the World Cup in 2019. I was I was at the, at the games. I just don't remember the championship game. I know it's like Australia, France, Spain, and, and um, Argentina. So Argentina is obviously a small country known for soccer. But one of the things that they do best is, I mean, they they get the most out of their their players. Their yeah. players are smart. They all have like the same type of flash mixed with fundamentals. Right. And a lot of them end up going to Spain. So we, we saw like the the guy that Minnesota draft and stashed, uh, Balmero. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be really good. He's from Argentina. Mm -hmm. So Valdoza fits like this stereotypical Argentinian guard, fundamentally sound would throw live ball, one-handed passes, has some flash and flair to his game, very competitive, maximizes his skill set. So he could be someone that if he gets the right opportunity that I think Knicks fans will fall in love with. 
as far as like how the point guard situation shakes out, I, I have no idea. I, I don't. Is Pey, uh, Peyton is a free agent, right? So he's yeah, gone. Yeah, forget about it. Frank is gone. So Out of there. is it just Rose and quickly under contract? Ro- no, no, no. Rose isn't even under contract. We yeah, got Rose nothing right now. No, I think they I, were I still him imagine back. him coming back. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. Too. Luca and IQ right now. Me, me yeah. too. I still think Rose comes back. I think it would be. I think he wants to be there, and he probably would even take less money to stay there. I think I I'm, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on all points. Um, Alex, your takes on on Vildosa and and where we go at the point? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, to be honest, I haven't watched uh, any kind of full games on yeah. him. Uh, but you know, he's got some pretty looking highlights uh, on YouTube. That's for sure. Um, They're all fun to watch. Are yeah, exactly. Guys exactly. Are- <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can make. It seems like he can make any pass um, in the book. So. Um, I'd be happy kind of, you know, rolling with him, maybe not as your starter, but, um, giving him some minutes, uh, you know, right off the, right off this, right off the jump. Um, and then, you know, maybe bringing Rose back, um, and then kind of having a point guard by committee with, with IQ. And then maybe if you draft like a Sharif Cooper, or Trey Mann, one of those guys, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge proponent of, of trading for, for Dame, you, you know, as much as I love him, I think that the price is going to be probably too much. Yeah. And then, you know, what you have left on the roster, um, you know, might not be enough to kind of boost you up above kind of where they finished this year, maybe up to like the three, two seed. Um, but uh, again, I think that shortens the timeline a little bit. I'd rather kind of keep this momentum going, keep the building going. Um, Randall's only 26, 27. Um, so he, he's not old by any means. So I think you got, you know, four more years of him coming up. Um, with RJ's growth, uh, with some of these rookies that are going to be coming in, um, you know, I'd rather just grow it organically and see where it goes from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys on Vildosa. I mean, I, I've been saying it since they got him that, you know, they, there just seems to be a certain floor that these Argentinian plays will, will come with, right? That, like, they have that, that mix of some flash, some flair, some fundamentals, they play hard. They play tough. Like you, those are the common characteristics of those yeah. players. Now, uh, you know, Scola and Ginobili were kind of the outliers in terms of being, you know, those global so- superstars. But a lot of these guys, whether it's Delfino, Nocioni, C. Campaso come in, Knicks had Prigioni. They all play at at a very very um, high level of of competent team oriented basketball, and so. I think he'll be fine with us now. Does that mean he's our starting floor general? I'm not going to, you know, bet my house on it. I still feel like we need to draft a point guard because the free agent class is not great. And whether you get Conley or Lowry, yes, they will help us. I think they will make this team better. I think they'll they'll help our guys develop. But they're not long-term options. Yeah. What do you think of Schroeder? I don't want Schroeder. I don't, I don't want Schroeder. <laughs> I like him. I just think him going to LA was was kind of hurt his stock a little bit. I think he's best used as a six man. I think if he's yes. if the Knicks have a you know like a, a solid game manager, yes, starting, and then you bring Dennis off the bench, he can manufacture points. He can get into yeah. the lane. So I I like him. I just think that he's best used as a six man. Yeah, if we're able to generate enough offense, I, I'm fine with him as a six man because then he can just come in and, and do what he does best. But mm-hmm. you know, to put that on him, I just don't feel like I could trust him, and, and that's my thing. Um, and then the Lonzo thing, you know, Lonzo's interesting, but I just don't see them paying twice for him. I don't see them trading draft capital and then paying him to bring him in here. I just I'm don't not see a Lonzo it. fan. I, I just I just don't see it. I think he's good. I just don't think he's, you know, half court kind of run your offense guard. Uh, Great in transition um, and and can, you know, can, you know, the shot is improved, but um, I don't think he's that great at running offensive sets and kind of orchestrating everything. Yeah. And he doesn't want to get fouled. So I'm not a big fan of point guards that, that do not want to get to the foul line. And I mean, he's not as bad as Ben Simmons, but I've seen games where it's close and it's like a hot potato. He's giving the ball up as, as soon as he can because, you know, he doesn't want that pressure on him. Yeah. If somebody's going to overpay him just because his class is weak, whether it's Chicago or I don't know, but I think somebody's going to overpay him. And, and that's the thing. You're going to have to pay twice, right? You got you to trade for him and then you have to, uh, then you got to pay him. 
Yeah. And so that's the thing. Like I said, I think he could he can help us in, in certain ways. You know, the, running the half court sets might be might be uh, something that you know needs work on. Obviously, the corner threes he's there defensively. He's there. I think he can run pick and roll. I think he can get us out in the transition. Um, but I don't even think he can run pick and roll because you know he's not going to the basket. Well, I, yeah, I think I think yeah. that's part of the issue, right? I, I think that, and is I don't part think that helps issue. Mitch or Obi. So in transition, I, I think he could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. And, and RJ as well. I, I think I think that's where he could really excel. Um, yeah, he's like the one guy that his shooting percentages look decent, but I feel like teams still don't respect him. He still gets a lot of wide open, wide open shots, and. Yeah. He'll he'll have a few games where he'll hit four out of seven, and then he'll go on a two for thirty, and it still ends up balancing out to the high thirties. Yeah, it, it's going to be tricky, man. But as I said, I still think we need to get something out of this draft. We have three, technically three first round picks. If you want to look at thirty two, is that I still think they need to try to come out of here definitely with with a scoring option at the wing, but try to come out here with with a guy that can play the point. Or that you might groom into the point because we just don't have any any long term answers. I think Rose will be back. I think they'll find a way to bring Rose back. Um, do they get into the Lowry sweepstakes? He's another guy that's going to want to get paid. I'm not so sure. And Would you see. dump some some back end stuff for Kemba? <laughs> Try to get Kemba out of out of Siberia. I'm I hearing mean, the Lakers like, are heavy on Kemba, man. They, they would take Knox, Frank, fifty eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that deal. Yeah, I would do that deal. They'll they'll take whatever draft two thousand forty one. They'll to, take to it. bring Ken, to, to bring Kemba home. Yeah, uh, I mean it's a couple years too late, man. Especially with that knee injury, but definitely better than what we have right now. So yeah, I'd probably just I'd probably just rather pay Kyle Lowry for two years. Yeah, and not give hey, up anything but money. I'm scared. Like Kyle looks like he has a lot of time left, but. We've seen guys just hit that that one year and it, yeah. they just fall off a cliff. Like Nash with the Lakers, right. that's what I'm scared and, of. And, gonna... and his style of play is suited to where, you know, he's still taking charges, still playing, yeah. you know, the, the winning type of basketball. But if his body holds up, I mean, he's he, he's a freak of nature. He's he's not getting enough credit for it. See, I, I think I think it's still important though because given that. The chances of us getting the superstar is slim to none this offseason. I still feel like you need to have someone with that dog mentality to take yep. the pressure off of Julius. And, and it was, it was ne- you know, never more present than in the playoffs. <laughs> you know, and, yep. and Rose was that guy. He was our leading scorer, but he, he just couldn't carry us long enough on those knees, man. So, and then Lowry's, Lowry's the same thing. He's 35 years old, but mentally he, he can be that guy that you can go to to take that pressure off Julius and RJ, you know, maybe RJ takes a turn. We'll see. But um, I think that's how Lowry could definitely fit and, and help us win some games. So Yeah, definitely. Going to be interesting to see, man. But, but fellas, I, I thought this was a great show. Shout out to Carlos Pena, who says, um, who sent a super chat. He says, how high would 1921 and Dallas 2023 pick get us? I'm going to look into that. I, I mean, I don't see in this draft, I don't see <laughs> you getting that far up into the lottery. But you know, maybe low end lottery. I, I think you know, maybe a ten. Maybe uh, a ten. I don't know. Right. You ain't, you're not I getting you're Cade. Cra- I, I, I think, think Carlos is angling for Cade. You're not getting Cade with that. <laughs> no. You know. So um, yeah, we'll we'll see. But certainly something to to chew on. And then real quick, once again, Raphael, for the people that came in late, um, break the news for us once again on a on a potential sleeper pick that the Knicks are uh, are interviewing this this coming Saturday. Yeah, Vrenz Blindberg, 6'10", positionless. It's kind of hard to, to give him a position because I think he can play maybe two through four. Um, decent shooter, but I think his his best skill set is his versatility. Not many guys with his size and ball handling skills and, and upside as a shooter. I think that, you know, he, he needs to put on weight. He's a little, a little skinny. But as far as like his fluidity, I think he'll be able to defend multiple positions also with a creative coach. And it's questionable if Tibbs is a creative coach or not. Yeah. But I think uh, Renz could really be a weapon. To me, he reminds me of peak Chandler Parsons. And 
you know, if you're a Memphis Grizzlies fan, then you you, you hate that. But this is Nick's <laughs> fan TV, so you guys didn't pay him ninety million dollars and they have to see him wear street yeah, we'll, clothes. We'll blame but the knee I injury, think, man. And this is injuries, injuries kill Parsons, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they, they hated him in, in Memphis, oh. and then um, you know, maybe even a little bit in Dallas also. But yeah. the the player that he was, maybe like his last two years in Houston. The one year in Dallas where he averaged about 16, 5, and 5. I think Vrenz can be that type of player. Maybe even a best case scenario, more productive, because I feel like the NBA started to change to favor Parsons' game mm-hmm. right as he started to decline. But that is my comparisons for Vrenz. Great stuff, man. So we'll see if his name is called on draft night, but another guy that the Knicks are bringing in. Um, Fellas, great job. Great insights. We definitely appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, as the draft gets nearer, we'll we'll do our mock draft. We'll bring Corey back, have you guys on. We'll do a mock draft and and, uh, see where the Knicks end up. And for the fans out there that tuned in, definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in as we get ready for... uh, the NBA Finals game two, if, if that's what you're into. But if not, hopefully we, we got your draft questions and, and comments addressed. So, um, Alex, let the people know where they can find you, man. Great, great job. Yeah, uh, on Twitter, uh, at Nick's Draft. Um, that's pretty much where I post Simple everything. Simple and clean. Um, yeah, so pretty pretty easy to find me. At Nick's Draft. And, and Raphael, where can the people find you, man? You can find me at Barlow500 on Twitter. And you can find all my video breakdowns for these, these draft prospects, including Vrenz and everyone that we've mentioned, except Grimes. I haven't done Grimes yet, but you can find that on NBA Draft Junkies on YouTube. Yeah, and you also have an interview with Vrenz on your channel, right? Yeah, I, I've done a couple of podcast interviews with him. And like, I, I don't know if I mentioned it off air or on the air. I've talked about him so much today, but I was like early on the bandwagon. And so when I reached out to him, we did a few podcasts and... You know, I, I probably talk to him two or three times a week. So he's the one that allowed me to to break the news about his workout mm. with the Knicks. And this all came after a good showing at the, I don't know, I guess they're calling it the Minnesota Combine. Do they have an official name mm. for it? But it's a combine. That's what at I the, saw, yeah. yeah, it's a combine <laughs> I had in Minnesota. They brought in, I want to say, like 40, 40 guys. And some guys were at the Chicago Combine. They, they ended up having to go back twice. But he uh, he ended up going to this one. I think he had some visa issues, so he missed the Chicago one. So, yeah, he allowed me to break the news, which which I thought was pretty cool. Great job, man. So we'll see what happens there. And uh, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Remember that tonight's show is presented by Manscaped. As usual, go to manscaped.com, enter promo code NYX for 20% off plus free shipping on the Lawnmower 4.0. And definitely check out the uh, Perfect Package 4.0, which is a great package for you guys as well. Also want to shout out one more sponsor, and that is uh, my guys over at Zip Chair, man. My guys over at Zip Chair sent me a dope chair let me show you guys real quick hang on one second so you got the uh custom knicks fan tv zip chair with the uh cp insignia and and the uh and the kftv logo man so real dope ergonomic you know what i mean allows me to do what i do best so Shout out my guys over at Zip Chair. This is uh, their top selling gaming chair. So uh, if you're interested in getting one for yourself with a personalized logo, they do any type of logos or uh, embroideries, go to zipchair.com, enter promo code NYX, and you can get 10% off your order. So shout out my guys at Zip Chair for sending me uh, my custom chair. Also remember that this show is available in audio podcast format. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the major ones on the Knicks Fan TV. So uh, no need to miss it. And yeah, man, great job as usual, guys. We will uh, see you guys next week for another episode 